Happy New Year and welcome back to all of our Empress Champagne Club members. It's exciting because we've had a new container arrive and most of it was for you, exclusively for you. We have two producers this month that have never been here before, two unique wines and the topic of this month is to expect the unexpected. This is what the club is all about, giving you something that you've never had before, challenging your expectation on what champagne is. When you go into a bottle shop and they have the big brands, they follow a formula because that's the market expectation. These producers are not beating to the drum of everybody else. They're dancing their own tune, they're making champagne the way that they want to make it and they're creating something that's unique and memorable and outstanding. Two producers this month, Marteau Guillaume, Domaine Collet, both Blanc de Blancs, both with one gram dosage each, but coming from vineyards that don't classically grow Chardonnay. Chardonnay often from the Cote de Blanc, very mineral, very linear. We've got Chardonnay coming from the Valley de la Marne that normally specialise in Pinot Meunier, and we have Chardonnay coming from the Cote de Cézanne, which normally specialises in Pinot Noir. Let's see if you enjoy something completely different. First champagne that's coming out to all of our lovers this month, first time in Australia, which is really exciting. So we have Mato Guillaume. I love this label. The wooden label is such a nice touch on the bottle and the wine is Lomatique, but a little bit about the house. Quite often in champagne and through history, you've got a lot of wine growers who are selling their grapes onto cooperatives or other champagne houses because some of those big houses need a lot of fruit and they cannot own all the vineyards. So they've got three generations that were already working the vines within this area in Bonil and Shirley Saman and we have parcels of fruit that were being sold off to the cooperatives. We had three generations. We have Marcel, we have Joel and then we have grandson Guillaume. Guillaume convinced his father that they should really be making their own wine. He was very passionate about their vineyards. He was very passionate about the environment, very passionate about making wine. He went off and did his bit of cultural studies. And actually they did splice off eight hectares of the fruit from a fairly big parcel to make this particular Champagne House, which is now under the family name for the first time, which is very exciting. So 1996, great vintage by the way, is when they first started to produce wines under the family brand. 2003, Guillaume took over after completing his studies. I've been reading more and more about him and it's just so interesting in terms of his passion and precision. Obviously, he's following organics and biodynamic practices. He's operating under the lunar cycle. He doesn't use any malolactic fermentation. Now, some of our more experienced club members will know that we have this conversion between tart malic acid into the softer lactic acid. He's holding that back, so you've got really defined acidity. His spontaneous um, kickoff of the yeast in the vineyard, he's using barrel from certain parcels that and not meant to impart a woody flavour, but certainly encourage the micro-oxygenation of the wine within the barrel. So he doesn't want wood influencing the wine, he wants this breathability. And of course, he's very, very focused on his terroir. Everything's done with precision and passion. It's so exciting to have this winemaker in Australia for the first time. They're tiny quantities, and I really do love this champagne. The champagne that we're presenting to everybody is a wine called Le Matique. Now this really does sum up the topic for this month. Le Matique in terms of translation from French to English, and it's hard to put a precise definition because we don't have this word in English. It's someone who's out of place. So someone who might be disturbing the truth, but is right. And in this wine, what they're saying is, I'm growing Chardonnay in the Valley de la Marne. Now, the Valley de la Marne has a different soil type and it is clay and it is richer. And Chardonnay is not the preferred grape varietal that's grown in this parcel. It's normally uh, Pinot Meunier, but this is 100% Chardonnay. It's from the base of 2017. Now listen, this is really important. Now, you might have 100% of the grapes from one year, 2017 is the, is the vintage, but if it's not aged um, for a certain period of time, then they don't have to declare it. This is um, certainly the choice of the winemaker to declare the vintage or put the vintage on the bottle or not. But in actual fact, it has spent good time in the bottle. It's almost five years. So it's interesting whether they declare it and put it as a vintage or not, but it's one harvest. It's all Chardonnay, it's barrel, it's no malo, and it's good time. And when I put the wine in the glass, 
You've got to observe the colour on this wine. Now, often when you have a Blanc de Blanc, a white of whites or Chardonnay, you get this really um, beautiful golden colour with a tinge of green. This is so intense. It's got time, but only one gram dosage. And I say to myself, one gram of dosage, what is that going to influence over the wine? It's such a tiny um, balancing of acidity, no malolactic fermentation, so very tart on the palate, but the intensity on the nose, the aromatic property, both from thyme, both from barrel, this butter brioche cream, lovely ripe golden fruit, but when you put it on your palate, you know it's going to be crisp, bright, acidic. It's part of the winemaking style of the Maison. It's clean, it's lifted, it's elevated, but there's a texture to it. If you're looking at Chardonnay from the Cote de Blanc, it's mineral, it's very linear, this is rounder, this is softer, it's got more body, it's got more depth, and these are characteristics of the Valley d'Alemagne. of our connoisseurs, we have Domaine Collet, Silex Ecre coming out to you. I absolutely loved this wine. I adore the house. They are a cooperative. So this is a group of growers that come together. They will sell the majority of their fruit to other houses. We won't say who, and they will keep the best of the best from themselves. This wine um, is a Chardonnay, of course, the same as the previous wine, 100% Chardonnay, so Blanc de Blanc, coming from the Cote de Cezanne. Cote de Cezanne is quite far south. So of course, opposite hemispheres, when we go further south, we're getting warmer temperature and actually more aspect. So we're getting hillier aspect. We're getting more ripeness of the fruit. And the name of the wine is giving an indication as to what's going on underneath the vineyards. And a lot of people think that champagne is all pure chalk, but there are subsoils going on. Silex is a calcious limestone and cray being clay. Chardonnay grown in these environments gives a different texture. Chardonnay is a chameleon. She'll take on the environment with where she's grown. House founded in 1941. So we've got some time, we've got some experience and the winemaker's really experimented with this wine. He's really thought about it. And what he's done is taken Chardonnay from various parcels in this region and he's fermented them in different vessels. So we've got stainless steel tank, we've got large oak foudre, we've got small barrel and then he's blended those cuvées together to give him his precise wine that he wants. It's been in the cellar, in the bottle for 33 months, a good period of time. And again, the same as a previous wine, only one gram dosage. But I would really encourage you, if you can, and this is the best way to experience a club, is to have both wines. Look at them not too far apart. I mean, I'd say one night is ideal. The acidity feels different. You've got no malolactic fermentation on the first wine, but you've got malo on the second. You've got timber on the second, but the creaminess, the, the brioche, the butter, the lemon, the citrus, the dried flowers, there's a softness and an elegance to it. But what's really interesting for me on the nose when I look at this wine is this clay character. And often we associate memory with experience. It takes me back to childhood playing with Play-Doh or plasticine, this beautiful clay character. There is a warmth and a richness and a complexity on this wine that I absolutely loved. And I have to say, I've already had this wine twice. This is a wine that I will continue to drink. It is so rich, so warm, so generous. I think it's a great example of a Blanc de Blanc, but grown in a different region down in the Cote de Cezanne with a little bit of warmth and a little bit more richness. So for all of our Champagne Club members, this is what the club is all about. Diversification, experimentation, us bringing you the very best of the region and looking at the way the winemaker can utilise different terroirs, different vessels, different grape varietals in different areas to give you a unique expression of Champagne. A lot of the time people put Champagne in one category but it's actually so diverse and it's so interesting and that is what we do. We hunt high and low for interesting Champagnes to expand your knowledge. Hopefully you'll find something that you really love. We had two amazing houses this month, two different examples of Chardonnay from different regions. Expect the unexpected, both beautiful. If you want more, of course, head to emperorchampagne.com.au. Write in with any questions that you like, kyla at emperorchampagne.com.au, and we'll see you on the next episode.
the other bottle and clear us out so it doesn't have to be shared space. <laughs> when you need it. <laughs> oh that is a proper champagne shower, my bloody rug. Fuck. I know, it's like fuck. <laughs> Sorry about the swearing. Oh my God. Do you want to put your mouth under there? I need another <laughs> glass. Where's the other glass? What the hell? <laughs> Bro. Holy shit.